Okay, <clears throat> so let's get started. Um, I, <laughs> I want to talk about this portrait here. Um, I was about to talk about it last time, uh, but I ran out of time. So let's just jump right in. What I look at, when I look at this, I see really great features. I see a face that is easy to look at. Um, very well done, no major mistakes. But it's also missing a lot of anatomical components. But that, I wouldn't say that's the worst issue because anybody can add some ears and a neck. The biggest problem, I would say your biggest problem, meaning the problem that's going to give you the most trouble in the future. Not, oh, you missed the ears. If you just added the ears, everything would look better. No, no. This is a deeper problem. This is a problem that's in the root of your tree. It's not up there above the surface where we can see and easily fix it, like adding ears or adding a neckline or fixing, a, you know, asymmetry or something like that. One of your root problems is the weak edges you have here. Making edges appear more visible is one of the trickiest walls you're going to hit as an artist because it is like inverting the line dependence. Before, you had a line, and your line was nice and sharp, and you gave your line so much cleanliness. It was clean. The sides of the nose, everything was clean on that line. But then for some reason, you know, Isterbach comes along and tells you get rid of your line, start using edges. So you get edges. But for some reason, you guys don't give the edges that were once this line the same treatment the same sharpness. For some reason, you guys think that now because you're painting and rendering, quote unquote, or now that it's skin, it means you're blending because that's the natural next word when someone says skin, oh, blending. Hair, oh, fine detail. Lashes, oh, many little brush strokes. It's like the easiest next association with the topic. You say skin, you think blending. So that's why you guys think that it's okay to just mush up these really, really critical edges on the face, like the side of the nose. So why is it that if had this had been a sketch drawing, you would have added a line, right? For the side of the nose? Can everybody agree on that? At least on the on the nostrils. And this isn't even the most important edge. They've got edges here in the focal point, which is the big, big, you know, the big uh, diva of the face. So why is it that when you're sketching edges, your lines are clean and sharp and pretty, but when you're rendering edges, they're not clean and sharp and pretty? Skin does not mean that all of your lines go out the window. That's not what skin means. Skin just means you're blending the negative space, as I spoke about last time. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to really quickly give this um, character a neckline. So I'm just going to duplicate to rush the process along. And um, that way I can get a nice, well evened out neckline for this character. And I'll give the character a pair of ears. And again, just um, throwing this pair of ears on either half, oops, oh, whatever, flip horizontal, and then just take that over there. And basically what I want to show you guys is that there is a minimum level of sharpness required for faces when you're rendering. Please write that back to me. Write that down on your notes. Put it up on your wall. There's a minimum level of edges you have to have in your portraits. You just have to have them or else you're going to be painting in a very um, misty style. A style that doesn't really feel like it has, it is rooted in any level of clarity when it comes to the resolution. It's all kind of abstracted and um, uh, non-representational. There is a minimum level of edges.
What I'm going to do really quickly is I'm just going to set up the ears just really quickly um, for this face. And, and then I will talk about all of these required edges. And this will be one of the new getting started videos because I think edges are very, very underrepresented in the world of tutorials. And not a lot of people are just talking about edges. Um, the most important edges on the face. Um, I can't get into it deeply, but my master class gets into it more than enough. And I actually have a list of the edges needed in the face. Um, if, you, if you're a list type of person, if you're a visual um, uh, um, learning type of student, that master class is perfect for you. Uh, but uh, but I'll, right now I'll give you guys the free rundown of it. So I'm going to throw a quick shadow on the neck to help us create that edge of the chin. So this was super easy to do. Why don't you do it? You're on day two. You're not forbidden from drawing ears and noses. It's just so quick. Just do it next time. Why are you, why are you depriving yourself of that uh, level of completion? No, no, no. Don't say, oh, I got to focus on the face. No, no. You don't need to say that. You can just say, um, uh, you can just you can just do this instead. And then remember that you are teaching yourself how to have a higher level of, 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 of patience for the rendering process. If you factor out drawing in the nose and ears and whatever it is you're doing, you're, you're doing a focus study and but you're also not teaching yourself to be patient with the process the full process of painting a face which comes with all components and so the 14 day challenge has a minimum requirements so you have to show those areas because the proportions of the ears are hard to figure out sometimes um i'm just gonna do one more adjustment for the ears they need to be oops they need to be a bit higher um just in between the eyes and the nose okay so the edges are these edges these are the most important edges of the face all right you want to make notes make notes you want to take screenshots of the video and put them on a word pad and write little notes do that you want to write notes on your sketchbook do that you want to sketch a doodle a little face and show all the edges do that whatever you do along this list alongside this video you're going to remember better the most important edges of the face are these. I'm going to try to do them in chronological order, meaning sharpest to less strict sharpness. So the, the eyelid line, the eye socket line, I wouldn't say it's the most sharp, but it's part of the focal point. The lower eyelid, if there is one, if there are some kind of divots there, if not, it's softer, but there is an edge. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't include the eyebrows in since it's textural. The edge of the face against the background. Edge of anything against anything. The edge of the nostrils against the face. The edge of the of the, the fold of the nostril against the face. The cast shadow edge if there is one. This isn't an edge that's going to stay sharp, but it's one of the edges you block. So remember, these are some of these edges are unblended, but they're part of a block. But they're important edges. They're just on a, on a, on a, on a spectrum, sharpest to least sharp, but they're still part of it. The edge of the two lips. And then we have sometimes the edge of the lower lip on the chin, the edge of the face against the neck. These are really, really important edges. There are two types of edges, two important types of edges. The first one is if you got a piece of paper and you folded it. Yeah, the paper was once just flat unfolded. Then we just gave it a fold along the middle. Okay? So A, B, A, B. If the light is coming from here, which would get the most light? B would. A would get second place. If the light came in from here, A would get first place for the light's attention, let's say, and B would get second place. So we need an edge to discern between these two because they face different directions. If you drew a perfect perpendicular line from either one, you'd get two completely different arrows. 
But here, if you drew a perfectly perpendic uh, perpendicular line from any point on the paper, they all face the same way, meaning they all get the same value. The lines that come out, these vectors, reflect the value that surface area, A or B, will get. Okay? There's another type of edge. There's the overlap. One object is in front of another object. Between these two objects is a span of distance. Seen from this side, this object and this object do not touch. There's air in between them. Because this, the matter ended here, there's just no more matter. It's just an edge. That's it. The background starts. Edge. Overlap edge. This face against the background is the overlap edge. A against B. A against B. This is all you need to know to know how to break down the edges in your references and bring them over into your drawing. Those are really important types of edges and they're probably the only types. There's really no other type of edge. Um, if there are, they're extensions of these two main types. So what I'm going to do is reblock this face with those edges in mind. And what will happen is slowly we will reapply a new level of resolution. What's resolution when you when you look at a, like a larger scale photo or print or um, a bigger TV? Edges are just sharper. That's what they say. Sharper edges. You know, when our TV is sharp edged, clarity, vision, color spectrum. It's all just about how many pixels are capable of creating the sharpness of this edge. It's not being shared over two little pixels, which is the resolution. So I am re-blocking literally everything, giving it a whole new set of edges. The stage of blocking is being revisited in this painting. And that's why I'm saying this is one of the tree root problems. All right, this isn't a branch we can just cut off and the disease stops. No, this is a problem under the tree. If you don't resolve this now, it's going to come back later and keep coming back. And you're going to keep facing issues with how muddy your work might look because an edge problem ends up manifesting as a contrast problem because edges remedy contrast. Look at the amount of contrast you had. These are your values. I didn't do anything else. The edges revealed them. That's why your work looks muddy. The muddiness is the secondary disease and the edges are the primary disease or the lack of edges. Okay, so edge work is like the most important fundamental to learn because it is what your the what matter, it's what the matter, it's what the atoms of your painting are doing. And it's, it stems from a, a uh, it stems into technique and your blocking brush. It also is an exercise of patience and mindset while drawing because you gotta be patient, you gotta block. You can't run to the fun stuff right away. The fun stuff comes after the work. Nostril hole is the face under the nose. Did you guys think about that? Um, and so I'm just re-blocking this whole area as if I never blended. There's a shadow under the septum, a delicate shadow under the septum. Thank you, Mr. Motorcycle Guy. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm sorry about the noises you guys hear. It's summertime now, so everyone mows at 5 o'clock. All of the bikers in my neighborhood drive by my house at 5 o'clock. I am so sorry. I've tried the noise suppression. It made my videos too quiet, and I got complaints. There's nothing I can do about this. So again, I'm just cleaning up. Look at how much shadow you had on the upper lip, and that's all making things look really, really muddy. You say you don't hear it, but then I hear it when I'm editing the video. And so the lips, because the lips are over blended, you don't need to over uh, clean up the edges of the lips on the outside, but the overlap edge, this lip on the lower lip, those definitely need to be cleaned up. Okay. And so the cylinder tells us how far to extend the highlight 
of this lower lip. Yes, I'm going this far. Look at the navigator. It's auto blend. Having the navigator on shows you that you're blending. Um, uh, what, what you're blending is going to look like, sorry. And that your blocking looks good. So I'm just softening it just a bit. But I'm letting it extend that far, reducing general muddiness. And then we've got the eye socket, which I usually don't block in. I uh, radial shade in. That's why I left it at the end. I didn't want to keep changing brushes. But I give the upper lid a nice, clean value. Okay. And the upper eyelash line, a nice, clean value. Look at all these random brush strokes you've got. That's what's holding your skill back. But if you like that painterly soft look, you don't have to watch this video. This is not the video topic for you. There's other videos that I talk about that have the kind of style technique topics. This is not one of them. This is about pushing the rendering as far as it'll go. Okay. We've run into a little obstacle. A lot of my private tutoring students, especially those that take on the 14 day challenge, even the skilled ones, and I'm talking, they're so good, why are you even in the class type good? I do not allow them to paint the pupil and the iris for class because it's a test. How good does this good eye look without all of the fun decorative features? Get rid of them. Challenge yourself. Put yourself in a position where if you didn't have all the sparkles and the glitter, would your work look good? That's how you train like DBZ level training. That's the weighted, weighted tunic that once you take it off, your true power is visible. Okay? So this is like giving yourself weights while working out. Getting rid of the pupil and the iris makes it so that it really stress tests your skills. And by skills, I mean your ability to control your edges, your ability to shrink your brush, your ability to manage your contrast. So those are the ways to render right there. And so right now we're, we're dealing, this, this video is about one of the ways to render. Again, the ways to render are, um, oopsie, are edges, most important, Second most important is contrast, or these are the ways to detail, render, same thing. And three is small brush, brush work or detail, small brush. And four is saturation. Um, saturation is another way to uh, create a focal point. But this one is the most important one because this one makes it easier to do this one then you don't really have to rely too much on the small brushwork, but most of you start here. Most of you are over detailing way too early. And then saturation is just fun stuff added at the end. It's really an afterthought. Um, so when you have good edges, you're building a really great foundation for the rest of your skill. And that's why we're getting, the getting rid of the people in the iris. Seems like a drastic study style. But you don't have to do this with every portrait you paint. This isn't getting rid of signing off pupils in the iris for the rest of your life. It's just for like two or three studies, yo. Like it's not forever. And it changes the way you look at the face. And it teaches you to, to, to delay the pupil in the iris the next time you paint. We're just delaying it. It will come back. And uh, for students that are really early, we're going to delay it all together for like a you know, month or two until they're done, you know, dealing with that level of maturity they need for, uh, for the rendering process. Okay, I'm going to give this eyeball its own little core shadow with the edge brush. Look, I have not changed my brush. It has been the same single number two blocking brush from my set. Go get it. <laughs> and then I'm just adding a little bit of brightness on the inside of the lower eyelid. I don't want them to look like they're wearing makeup or anything. Look at how many edges we've got here. One more little edge, which is the lip against the chin, creating that little pocket, that little nook there. Okay. Thank you, Kyle. So what I'm going to do next is blend. 
look at what happened. We provided an abundance of edges that the next time we blend, it'll be halfway done. The painting is almost finished. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? You over provide edges so that when you come back, the edges are that you kept have completed the painting. So I need to find my one of the most important painting processes that I recorded for my class. Um, and it is this one. Uh, so there's many different stages in this drawing. And the most important one I want you to focus on is those two, those first ones. You can see how the blending happens after. So blocking, blocking, blending, finishing. Blocking, blocking, blending, finishing. Notice the first two frames. Okay, blending, and finishing, blocking, blocking, blending. I took a step back with the blending. Let's keep taking a look. So I don't know how to fucking pause this thing. Um, I guess I can't pause it. That's okay. So blending, finishing, blocking, over blocking, blending back, finishing. Finishing means I brought in the soft brush. Are you guys listening? So most of the painting process is done with your blocking brush. You guys listening to me? Most of your painting process is going to be an exercise of resisting blending. All right? So that's what we're doing here. We are blocking to our heart's content and blocking every possible mo motion of the surface area until we have a decent amount of um, edges that oh, by the time we're done, all we have to do is just blend them away to the degree that is appropriate. Again, my masterclass also has a list of what to blend. It's really foolproof. It, it's, it takes you through everything. Unfortunately, I can't duplicate my masterclass. I don't have two and a half hours, um, but, uh, but this is a quick rundown of it. But if you need that list, go there. It's so much more detailed. It comes with templates, my brushes. It comes with everything. All right, so I'm just lightening the side of the nose a little bit. I'm trying to correct the sphere here, making sure that the sphere isn't too dark at the top. I'm really going to push this rendering today in front of you guys. Okay. And then I'm just going to try to get it to be a little more symmetrical. It's okay if things are slightly asymmetrical. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. And I'm just cleaning up some of these edges here. Okay. Um, Greensmith, Greensmith asks, maybe silly question, but does this blocking apply to, tradi to traditional oil? Um, I don't paint with oil paint, and I don't paint with traditional paint at all, uh, but I used to. Um, and one thing that I did is I blocked in layers. Good question, by the way. I blocked in layers. So I got the first level, which is the main core shadow of the head, I blocked it in, then blended it. Then the second layer of the basic structure of the nose blocked it in and blended it. And within a time period where the paint is still blendable. Then I blocked and blended the next level of detail, blocked and blended the next level of, de level of detail. In digital, you can block everything and then blend. But in traditional, you have to blend as you go, but you can still keep it organized. You can blend in waves and block in waves. Okay, but you can still apply this theory. This theory is media proof. So we're gonna blend now, okay? And after that, we're gonna do some finishing, meaning we're gonna apply the contrast we need. So I'm gonna blend in this order. I'm gonna blend the globular stuff, which is the stuff that is um, rounded. So the brow bone rounds up into the forehead. The sides of the nose are rounded. I shrunk my brush. Okay, I did not blend this away. Absolutely not. I need those edges. Those are focal points of the features or the focal or the main uh, landmarks of the features. 
I'm getting a pretty big brush and blending at the cheeks since it's got a fat deposit there. So the more fat you have, the more blending you do. <clears throat> I'm gonna blend around the mouth, as you can see. It did not need to be overly, um, oh, that's a bit too much blending, my bad. Uh, you did not need to be too cautious because, oh, you know, it looks bad while blocking. It shouldn't look good while blocking either because then you're not really blocking anymore. You're just trying to detail. All right. And then I'm blocking at the eyebrow, just on the inside of the eyebrow. I'm blocking at the second most fat pocket, which is under the brow bone. But I'm not blocking the crease. That's an actual edge that should not be blended. I gave you the list earlier. I'm blending the inside of the lower eyelid, but not the crease most part of the lower eyelid. I'm blending the eyeball since it's a ball. I'm blending the inside of the upper eyelid crease, but not this, not the top of the crease, not where skin is really getting folded. And then I'll do the finishing. Finishing is that layer you saw in that little GIF I made. I'm blending the tip of the nose so it just looks less mechanical. I'm blending the lower half of the nostril hole. I'm blending away at the edges to keep them a little bit cleaner. And I'm blending a little bit of the eye, I mean the nose cast shadow. So now I'm going to adjust your contrast. Now that the edges have revealed issues, we can adjust this contrast. So the upper lip is too dark. And so I'm just going to raise the shadow of the upper lip so that we don't have any random shadows coming out of nowhere in areas that don't really have it. I have my uh, flux on. That's okay. I'm going to bring in the cast shadow. So now that I've adjusted some of that contrast, oh, uh, the cast shadow of the nose needs to be brightened a little bit as well. I'm going to bring in the gradual radial value that drops down from a really, really uh, a high point, not a really high point, but it's kind of follows a high point, which is a high point of the brow bone, radially descending into the crease. I'll show you what that is. So forget about the explanations. Just watch the screen. You guys are probably all visual thinkers to a level. Um, don't worry about the words I use. Just watch the screen. Um, so you have full black, low opacity, and you're laying down your first brush stroke. Low opacity, we can barely see it, that's important. And I'm shrinking my brush with the open and close square bracket on my keyboard. And as I shrink it, I'm adding more paint because I'm adding an extra level that has accumulated from the previous levels. And so now I have this really nice gradual value that has created a more believable crease. You don't have to do it this dark. Not every eye looks like this, but it's enough to help you create believable resolution, especially if combined with a reference and you know what's happening in that reference because you've broken it down. You have a very nice crease that has added contrast and resolution and focal interest. Same thing on the next side, shrinking my brush as I add more paint. You don't even have to blend anymore because this technique is an auto blend. Oh, son of a bitch, I did it in the wrong layer. All right, it's okay. It's okay. All right, so one, two, shrinking my brush as I apply more paint. It's okay, guys, just get the explanation a second time. And then I'm going to, oopsie, delete away. Okay, and then we have these two creases here. They look great. I'm going to merge them down. I'm going to do a little bit more blending. 
And I'm going to start bringing contrast in other areas like the eyebrow. I'm going to throw in a waterline. Even if you look, 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 even if you blend away the upper line of the lower eyelid, it's blended away, right? All you got to do is get a sketching brush, get full white on low opacity, and draw in the waterline. This is exactly how you were supposed to do it anyway. Don't worry so much about the edge of the lower eyelid being sharp. It's just, there's a waterline there to help you create that distinction, even if you blended it away. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of just clean up this edge right here. And um, yeah, I thought, oh, I overthought the waterline when I was younger. I always overdid it. I always overdrew it. And my characters always looked miserable and dehydrated. <laughs> um, uh, so nowadays I'm just like, hey, the waterline, it just needs to be a little bit of sparkle there. The most important thing about the eyeball area is the ball of the eye. Um, that's it really. Okay, let's continue. So next we have to add radial shading on the highlighters level. Right, so we're raising contrast right now. That means that we're getting pure white on low opacity on soft brush. Remember, the radial shading is done with soft brush. I, have, I don't know if I mentioned that already. We're gonna put brush number one, number two, number three. We don't have to climb so high. It can be just three brushes and you're done. Okay, and then we have an eraser and we erase away at the eyebrow because we only need it on the skin not the hair and now we have this really nice elevation to the fat of the eyebrow okay I don't make it look easy it is easy but your brain makes it hard because your brain is the last time it did this it was difficult so your brain is gearing up for a difficult journey and so it will self-fulfill that prophecy and painting will be difficult and complex for you next time even though you just saw proof that all you have to do is these brush strokes and this degree and it's done humans overcomplicate things based off their memory of the event the last time they did it you have to build a precedent you have to trust this tutorial so much you follow it brush stroke for brush stroke so next time you paint you reference that time you painted brush stroke for brush stroke that's studying studying is building precedent for your brain to reference so it doesn't panic trying to do this really weird task it's never been asked to do before. It is as easy as it looks. What makes it difficult is your personal experiences. But it is as easy as it looks, I promise. All right, I'm gonna add a little, um, that little pocket on either side of the, of the brow, I mean, of the nose, right here. And then I'm just adding like a little pocket of shadow just for the side of the nose. Sometimes faces have them. I feel like this face needs it for some reason. Something's telling me to throw it in there. Probably a reference I use at some point. And then I'm going to bring in a highlighter blocker, which is like a white, but on low opacity-ish. And I'm going to use it on either side of the nose. Okay. And that's going to sharpen the side of the nose. I'm going to use it on the top of the cheek. I'm going to use it on the tip of the nose, on the bridge of the nose, on the, the square front area of the forehead, on the chin, on the edges of the lips, on the cupid's bow. Okay, we're blocking in the highlights now. That's that final layer that you can blend if you're doing oils. I'm going to darken the eyebrows. Just a touch. Around the middle mostly. That's where most of the hair grows anyway. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of radial shading for the edge of the lips. In fact, I'm just going to do that with a blocking brush. 
slowly radially you can block you can radial shade with a blocking brush so full black low opacity but with a blocking brush block one block two block three and what we're doing they're asymmetrical that's okay uh, what we're doing now is we're blending them assimilating them i guess into the rest of the face so that, that those creases actually feel like real dents or dimples at the edges of the lips not dimples out here the actual dimpling of the lip against the face when it's closed and i'm going to throw in the final black contrast line of the lip atop the other lip don't over render lips it looks weird it looks like your character is dehydrated honestly i am using the most basic template in my mind's eye right now i am not deciding that this face is better or more beautiful i am just basing it off the last face i must have seen or the last reference i looked at or the i don't know this is just what pops out when i render without reference it's different every single time but there's a general like middle ground between them okay and the lips are kind of asymmetrical so i'm just gonna pop them back together but I like the asymmetry a lot. Kind of just looks like she's got this quirky asymmetry in her mouth. Okay. And then I'm going to filter, liquefy, shape the face up a little bit. Faces can be this shape. My face is exactly this shape. But I'm just trying to give the student an opportunity to show more bone structure, especially in the cranium. There's more of a squared sides to the temple. It's more squared up here and rounded at the cranium. So rounded at the top. So it looks less like a pill or a capsule and more like a rectangle. So I'm just showing more bone structure. Okay, and then I'm just trying to show where the cheekbones are I added pretty defined cheekbones, so I'm just going to give them a little dent inward. Keeping a, a lot of that face fat in there because face fat is very beautiful. You don't really want every character to have a chiseled uh, cheek line. Like those people who get the surgeries on the face just to get rid of their face fat, which is it's so elegant, so feminine. Uh, but again, not everybody wants to look like that, so that's okay. And I'm just um, addressing some asymmetry. Okay. Okay. So now all that's left is just finishing work and adding in, with just enough time to spare, adding in the pupils back, adding the cast shadow of the lash line just like so okay and i'm going to add a touch more contrast to the lower lip sorry to the to the edges of the lips the two corners i'm going to add a little bit of bounce light on the lower lip Reflecting off of the chin. Okay. I'm going to add a bit of just, you know, visual libraries just popping off. So I'm just adding a little bit of like a shadow on the lip just here. I'm adding a highlight for the upper lip which is that cylindrical highlight. I'm pushing the highlight of the Cupid's bow a little bit more, a little like sparkle on the tip of the nose. A little bit of that same glimmer or glistening on the upper eyelid. Okay, a little bit over here. And so not only have we raised the resolution, we've added detail, a little bit of highlight on the inner corner of the eye. Not every eyes, not every pair of eyes has this, but some do. 
highlight on the hair of the brow bone makes the hair feel real like it's actually sparkling I'm using the skin tone instead so it doesn't overdo it okay and then now I'm just gonna add the pupil and the iris back in starting with the pupil starting with the iris and I'm just gonna keep them brown like you had them of course this face is completely different from where we started so I'm just placing it anywhere okay and I'm going to duplicate grabbing the next one and placing it there it'll show me that the eyes are asymmetrical that's okay that's normal lower it to make it more asymmetrical it's okay to keep them asymmetrical one thing you have to do though is cross them inward so they look like they're looking at the viewer you want the character to look like she's looking right at you that's powerful in a portrait because it makes your portrait feel that much more realistic that beautiful gaze and you can make them a little bit bigger if you'd like if that's your style though the smaller they are the more realistic they will look but if your style is slightly bigger go for it and um, these eyes are a little bit too asymmetrical let me see if I can just raise one because I then I'd have to open up the eye and I don't want to do that but the eyes do feel a little bit um, a little bit sleepy all around remember this is a complete change in the face so I'm not gonna be making it look exactly like the before I know some of you like that and I want the character to look directly at the viewer they select okay I don't want to add the pupils on the iris until I see what the before looked like uh, look, I don't want to commit to it, but this is a decent spot for me to stop. Um, and then the iris, the pupil, would just go right in the middle as a fully dark spot. And once you add this in, you kind of know, hey, I, I know how, to, how dark to go everywhere else. Because this is the purest black in the whole painting. So you don't have to, okay, this is a little bit off center. This has to be perfectly centered, by the way. I kind of fudged it up, but, um, okay. And then because now we know how dark this has gone, we can make the lashes just a little bit darker to accommodate that new level of contrast. You see how careful we are with the contrast? We only added the black way after the fact. And then I like darker eyes, so I'm just adding those in in my drawings. I just love their contrast. Um, merge layers. Okay, so I'm going to save this. No, actually, I can't do that. I cannot do that. Um, I'm going to, maybe I can save a group. I never really saved a group. So I'm going to copy, flatten, sorry, 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 flatten. How am I going to do this? How am I doing this? Do, 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 do groups, do they save? Um, no, they don't. Oh, shit. Um, oof. Okay, well, it's a good thing I didn't try that. Let's just flatten the image and redo the pupils and the iris later, at a later time. But you guys saw how I do them. You have to make sure they are focused inward for it to actually look like a gaze. Before, after. Before, after. Um, pick a spot. Its detail was interpreted. I don't have the original reference you used. The face changed a little bit. Uh, for instance, the nose was a little bit more of a Mediterranean kind of slanted nose like that. It's kind of cute. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I think that's much more accurate. And then the lips had a cute little smile. So filter, liquefy. 
Again, when I paint and it's so little resolution in the before, I have to bring in information from what I have available to me in my brain. So I'm just trying to get back what the artist originally intended. I think there's a hood in the eyes, if I'm not mistaken. Do you guys think that's a hood? I don't know if it is. All you gotta do is very simple. Not every eye has deep set eye sockets. You just take that eye socket we built, duplicate it, and lower it. And you get that same crease, but lower, representing a more hooded upper eyelid space. Okay, now I'm just trying to keep it the same character. I heard your calls. I am answering the calls of my people. Okay, and then the water line could be a bit thicker. I think I painted it away. But all we've done is just increased the, the resolution. If she does have a more round face, that that's cool. Honestly, I think the round face isn't an attempt to give her a certain level of fat. It's just they just, they just thought of a sphere and they added one in. Is the artist here today? I, I, I believe they were looking forward to their critique, but I'm not sure if they made it to today's stream. I hope they did. Okay. All right. So adding resolution is about locating the edges. All right. It's about adding that type of detail early on because the detail, the real detail is the edges. So now if we, I'm going to try to give that same that same soft gaze in your in the before, because that's something I don't want to lose. Um, I'm just going to superimpose it on the eyes you drew. Hopefully that'll help me find it here. It's kind of like a really cute spaced out look. Okay, I'm just uh, trying to draw the same face here. Okay, so do you guys have any questions at all? I'm just going to decrease that a touch just to help it connect to the layer underneath. So before, after, Edge giving me plenty to think about. Um, yeah, it is, it is the, the real skill behind your painting skill. Um, you can say that learning how to paint is learning how to control your urge to blend. When you increase the, the level of detail in your work, you're pretty much just increasing the level of resolution. And that starts with the layer of edges. So I'm trying to bring it as close as possible. There, the character is also wearing makeup, but I, I advise against makeup. You become reliant on it to create contrast in your work, where the contrast should be real form contrast and not artificial makeup contrast. Do you guys know what I mean? So I'm just adding that a little bit of extra shadow, tapering it under the lash line. The more tapered the edge of the lash line, the more natural and human the eye will look. Okay. So this is like a mini masterclass for you guys today. It's gonna to be added to the Just Getting Started playlist I have on my channel to help those who are just getting into their 14 day challenge trying to figure out what the heck to do with their blocking brush. What is a blocking brush? Why? This video I hope helps you guys. And I hope I've gotten close to what this character's face was supposed to look like. Just to, just because I love that before. I love the character in there. It's just such a gentle spirit and I want to keep it um, as much as possible. I tend to kind of lose the 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 uh the original character sometimes if the resolution is so low um and that's it 
any questions let me look over to me the original doesn't look like it had huge problems it just seemed as though it's Rex explaining how to paint a bit stronger and how to fit the head and neck properly dramatic difference of initial improvement of me seeing it for the first time um thank you abu um i don't think they're here yeah i think they thought it was another day and i'm just uh just adding a bit of contrast so i'm trying to get the face to look similar as much as i can all right guys so um checking one more time uh you can go to my subreddit right here it, painting a face teaches you so much as you see from today's class other 14 day challenge critiques i've done in the past it's a great way to expose yourself to as many mistakes as possible because the more mistakes you acknowledge and fix the faster you get at painting and the better you get at painting um 14 day challenge 14 day challenge lots of illustrations a lot of styles are welcome here as long as it's not um too much of you know what and um and then we've got another 14 day challenge many portraits another 14 day challenge there is a lot of 14 day challengers here there are a lot and they can give you the critiques you need you're not alone in your journey and the less alone you feel while taking on this crazy new skill you just want to learn and it's your dream to be a great artist the the more you're go you're likely to try new things and try pushing yourself and pushing your skill the less the more alone you feel the less you'll try new things because it'll just be um not everybody's like this but it, it'll just feel like less daunting these experiences have been seen before people have made the same experience the same mistake i have i'm not making these unfixable mistakes a lot of people have had edge issues in their work way before you did and they fixed it i had crazy blendy lines back then god my work was embarrassing Maybe one day I'll show you guys some of the shittiest art I've ever made, but it's because I did such a bad job and I critiqued myself to the ends of the earth. I finally learned the real reason why, and then and I'm sharing it with you guys today. So just remember, everyone has these issues, and joining a community helps you fix them faster than just wallowing in them. Um, but that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you guys coming by for the live streams. Um, if you want to submit your work, just go to my subreddit. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.